Welcome to Old Guy Tech, the OGT.TV recording studio. Technology for the rest of us. 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 Hello, and thanks for joining the show. This is Rob with Old Guy Tech TV and Jonathan Charney. We're here to talk about some of the latest and greatest stuff going on on the internet today, and we uh, we found a few items that we thought might uh, might be interesting enough to share with you guys. And so uh, we're gonna we're gonna start out with uh, uh, what I picked up that I thought was really interesting. And uh, have you had a chance to uh, use Google Plus much, John? I am. I'm not a big fan of it. I I prefer Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I, we're used to Facebook, and I think that's one of the things that, that's caused I it, just don't like the UI. I, I, I think the UI is really poorly made. I mean, it, 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 I don't know, it really feels like an engineer made it. Well, from what I'm reading here, you're, you're right, an engineer made it. It says here, um, this is from uh, uh, ZDNet, and Ed Bott report, he, uh, he quotes... Uh, a Google engineer that says Google Plus a pathetic afterthought and knee-jerk reaction. <laughs> so that's uh, that's that's pretty good. And in summary, a Google software engineer who accidentally broadcast a 4,578 word rant about the company's failings saved his toughest criticism for Google Plus service. Uh, a list of features can't make up for complete lack of vision and a company where not getting it is epidemic. That's quite a quite an argument here and then I don't know I'm the jury's still out for me I, I know that as well I, I use Google Plus but I, I don't know I it maybe maybe Facebook is the warm and fuzzy because you know how it works and 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 all of that and I, I don't know I, I just think it's a better service I mean it, it does help I have, I have a lot of people I know on Facebook but I just really don't like the way it's organized I you know, the only thing I don't like about Facebook is how they generally update their terms of service, and you know, there's a lot of BS they do with that. But I just don't like the way it looks. I don't like the way it feels. You mean either. Google Plus? Google Plus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, the, the the problem with Facebook is they do tend to just arbitrarily put things in and say, okay, this is it, and this is what we're doing now. But I don't. No, they change it. Enough people complain, and they do actually change it. I mean, yeah. there's been a few things that a lot of hubbub about. Um, I think it was at one point they were uh, saying everything you put on their pictures and all that is their property, and I, I think they, I think they changed that because there was enough hubbub about it. They do, you know, they do react to their users. It just takes a while. That's an interesting. So, so they actually thought at one point that anything that was put on Facebook was their property. I thought. I thought it was something like that, but this was a while ago. I, I, I swear it was something to that. No, oh, it's kind of different. So he goes on to talk about the knee-jerk reaction. Uh, a study in short-term thinking predicted on the incorrect notion that Facebook is successful because they built a great product. And there's a problem with Google Plus in a nutshell. It's a clone of Facebook built by engineers or people who think like engineers. Yeah, I like what they say later on, the, uh, later on in the article where Facebook um, let third parties build most of the stuff. You know, yeah. All the applications, the games, and... I you know fake like Google hasn't I mean even it says in the article they had no a APIs I think the way Facebook did it was, was was the best way to do it have a lot of people you know have people make it uh, and we you know when it starts up and then later on you know close the APIs when you get a lot of stuff finalized I I, I thought Facebook did the the correct way yeah. Well, let's see, he goes on to say an even bigger design blunder was the idea that shortening your contacts into circles would allow users to control the privacy of everything they post. Again, it's a reaction to Facebook and its privacy headaches, which we know they've, they've had quite a bit of. Uh, but he goes to say that somebody really, really didn't think this one through. And, and as others have pointed out, Google senior executives don't use Google+. Plus. Well, that's a big problem. I mean, uh, was it uh, MySpace had Tom Anderson, you know, one of the co-founders of MySpace, you know, was everybody's default friend. I mean, at least, he, I, you know, he was on there. I don't remember if he was on there a lot or not, but he was on there and it was a public profile. Yeah. Uh, Larry and Sergey and all the, you know, all the top people not using it. I think that's a major problem for him. Yeah, it certainly isn't very good. doesn't speak highly of it if their own people aren't using it. No, definitely not. So the final on the on the rant was that I'm going to talk about anyway is uh, we all know Google Plus isn't a social service, 
Blatantly, it's an identity service. It's a way to tell all Google pro tie, to tie all Google's products together with a single identity, so the Google customers who use one will use the others. Well, I, I can see why they did that. Um, it did seem like uh, uh, Google Plus invitations also took forever to get for them to get the, get it going and get it out. Uh, and, but uh, you know, <laughs> sad the sad thing, and, and you know me, I'm kind of a Google fan. Um, even I don't go to it hardly every day. Well, I, I, I don't. It was pretty fast. I mean, compared to uh, Gmail. I mean, it took it took me quite a while to get a Gmail account when it first, you know, when, when the privacy. This thing, you know, it went pretty quick for for opening for Google. I mean, they didn't do what they did with Buzz, which initially, which is they just gave everybody Buzz, and there was that huge hubbub about that. Yeah, and again, another one I never figured out. I didn't understand it, so but. It just wasn't my cup of tea. I mean, yeah. it was. I mean, I use Twitter. I mean, it, it seemed almost like a Twitter ripoff, and I don't. I'm not a big Google fan, so. Right. Well, I, and, and I'm trying to use Twitter, but probably more for following stories than for me actually posting anything. I, I still don't kind of don't really get it, but it it's there, and and I know you use it a lot for uh, what's happening in news stories, and and I guess it's good for that. Uh, but everybody's got a different idea about what's good, and you know. But it's it's obviously highly being used now, so good for Twitter. Um, as far as Google, you know, for me personally, the, the the best product that they have, I think, is their Google Calendar. Uh, I like it. I, I wish they would change the um, the UI on the website uh, uh, code that you put into your website to use it. It's it's the same one. They haven't changed it. Their internal uh, look is very very nice and clean and up to date. Their their uh, external look for, that you use when you link it to your own website uh, still looks pretty old and dated and tired. So it's time for Google to you know get that get that done for everybody. And I think that'd be nice. So yeah, I don't use the, the external calendar for anything. Um, I use the the eternal calendar, but I, I don't use right. I, I know I've we, never I, I have no reason for me personally to post it on a website. Yeah, I have a couple of organizations that I use it for, and it, and it works fairly well for people to be able to go and update and use and that type of thing. So I'm pretty happy with that. That part works out real good. Well, so what do you got on your list here? <coughs> the, this one's from Tech Dirt from a guy by the name of Mike Mesnick. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, it's basically talking about how. Uh, Homeland Security and ICE, uh, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, have been uh, taking down websites. <coughs> Excuse me. For uh, you know, they've been doing stuff like you know, fake purses. Um, like obviously, where you download movies, um, you know, a lot of stuff like that. For some reason, um, and how Homeland Security and ICE is involved in that? Because I think ICANN, who owns the, who's the domain register, I thought that was in the Department of Interior. Yeah, I don't know. Um, don't so know. it's just weird. Basically, what they're doing is they're 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 uh, removing you from the DNS, so you can't go to, you know, say if they removed Google's DNS, you couldn't go to Google.com. You'd actually have to go to their IP. Yeah, I see. So that's trying to take over. And so I think the article also talked about uh, you start doing that, and people are going to figure out workarounds. Yeah, there, there's an extension for I think it's for Firefox and Chrome. It talks about uh, that's called. Mafia fire. So basically, it's uh, I'm, I'm assuming it's some sort of whitelist somewhere that mentions, or blacklist in this case. Um, basically, it goes around so you could type in the domain. You know, it's uh, was it Italy? Some countries actually blocked uh, the Pirate Bay uh, under uh, court order. Right. So basically, what this does it's a complete workaround for you can go there. You know, by just typing in the name with the with this extension. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to try it, but there's not a whole lot of websites that, that I know of that, that, well, interest me, personally. I mean, I, I don't download. I'm right. Too, I'm too right. afraid. Right. Oh, I hear ya. I mean, there's, there's an awful lot of junk out there, there's no doubt about it, and so you kind of have to watch what you do and watch where you go, but I, I think it's very interesting uh, on the story on privacy issues as far as a search and seizure situation with... Uh, law enforcement, if you have your computer on screen saver uh, and law enforcement comes over and touches the keyboard or moves the mouse or whatever it may be, now what was on your screen is now viewable. Yeah. And unless there is a um, password, yeah, you can password protect it. Well, yeah, you could. I was thinking of a warrant. Unless there's a warrant, oh, yeah, they're, yeah, they're, yeah. they're really looking at. Uh, 
But, but if you know, so but that's like, supposed to look at it, well, right? Their, their argument would be if you broke in there, you know, and then everything's in perfect view, you know. So you walk, you know, they walk in there, you, you know, your computer's on, you know, it's an open view, so they should be able to, you know, do whatever. Well, but, you know, what's the difference between sitting in Starbucks with your computer open and somebody looking over your shoulder? Is uh, is that is not that now considered a crime? Well, the difference is it's law enforcement. I mean, it really comes down to the fact you know law enforcement has more power than civilians when it comes to you know they they arrest you. I mean, you could do a citizen. Well, they could be in there and, and do it all. You know, watching people. Also, you don't know who the guy is sitting next to you. He could be undercover and and. Uh, so now sure, do we have Big Brother in every Wi-Fi hot spot, and we have to worry about that? Well, how do you know you don't? I mean, you, yeah, know, yeah. The, the, you, the gi- you know, the giant conspiracy theory is, you know, they're they're out there in black vans or black helicopters, in some cases, you know, scanning Wi-Fi or whatnot. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, personally, you know, I, I, I password protect screensavers and all that. I mean, just, you know, it's it's like when I first got Wi-Fi when I had my house, was you know, I, I basically put a, a password on there to keep, you know, Honest people, honest. Right. I, I don't need some thirteen-year-old kid or, you know, some fifty-year-old pervert downloading stuff on my connection, and getting busted for it. I have no desire to go to jail for something that I didn't do. Well, exactly. And and isn't isn't that what we always talk about security? Make sure that you have a strong enough password and uh, password everything, and make sure your particularly your Wi-Fi routers for crying out loud. Make sure you got a password on that. You know, everybody using your. Uh, even if it was legitimate, I mean, not legitimate, but in other words, even if it, they were not doing some illegal activity, they were using your internet to, yeah. to be on the internet, you know, now, that's a crime in itself, so you, you need to password everything. You see, you I know. don't really find that a crime, but the only problem now in the days with bandwidth caps, at least here in America, you know, that's, you know, AT&T, I think, has 150 gigabytes, and I think Comcast here is 250, I mean, that's a lot, but I mean, if, you know, somebody's watching a, you know, a lot of TVs are downloading something pretty big, it's easy to get. Right. Right. Um, so, unfortunately, um, I mean, I use a, I use a program that makes you know randomized passwords. The only problem they're so random, I don't know them. You know, so it's I actually have to keep a you know password right. protected file folder, right. which is yeah. another problem. So now I have to stash a password somewhere so I can find it. It's your level of paranoia, is what I've always said. Uh, you know what? If you're out in the public and you're toting your your, your may it be your uh, Android, your iPhone, uh, your laptop, whatever it may be. And there's a possibility of you leaving it somewhere. Uh, having a good strong password is probably a great idea. Well, I mean, the well, the, the iPhone especially. I don't know about Android, but since I have an iPhone, I know there's uh, was it Find My iPhone, and I'm pretty sure we're there. You can actually do a remote wipe. You can actually remove everything from the phone. Yeah. The the thing that scares me is um, I read an article recently. I wish I had it in front of me. It talked about uh, well, cops basically they have this device. You know, it's like you know, yay big that. They basically just plug into you know your phone and they could just strip information off of it without any sort of warrant. Um, apparently, after everything I'm reading, maybe it's you know just a bunch of geeks being paranoid. But uh, you know they're they're doing a lot of stuff that is you know in my mind in my imagination is a violation of the Fourth Amendment. Yeah, I don't quite understand how that got passed as it's okay to take somebody's phone and, and access all their information well, without well, I a think, warrant. I think what it is, you got a bunch of old, you know, old, as they say, you know, Congress is the, you know, the oldest old gentleman's club. You know, that they just don't understand technology and too many special interests are, are fine Well, that, with that, that was a court decision, was not not that, that didn't have anything to do with Congress. Well, I, well, I mean, Congress, cause he, uh, Congress could easily pass a law, you know, basically saying any personal device, cell phone, computer, whatnot, needs a warrant. You know, because it is a personal device. I mean, so what's what well, you know? That, that's the way it should be, as far as I'm concerned. No, I, I agree. Think this whole I, idea of being able just to take take your phone, and right now it's only limited to your phone. But, but when's it going to limit to your Facebook account, to your well, laptop, you, well, to whatever? You know they're it's not be? doing it. Well, I mean, you don't for, know. For a while, I mean, I kept hearing news reports that uh, companies were demanding your password to your Facebook account. Uh, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, in, you in know, which, doing background checks. Um, I understand one of the biggest things that companies are doing now are going right out over to the Facebook to see what the heck's going on. Yeah, but you know? see with mine, I don't. You have to be my friend to to show anything. Right. I don't have anything that's. Well, you understand the securities. I think no, there's I'm, a lot I'm of just, people out there that don't. I'm just paranoid. I mean, there's there's stuff that I do share for public, but generally, it's you know, I'm a private individual. Well, I don't stuff. think that's paranoia. I think that's just your privacy issues. I mean, uh, if that's paranoia, we're all paranoid because I 
I want to make sure I keep my private stuff private as well. And one of the things I always recommend to all my friends uh, uh, is that uh, make sure that you don't put any data or information on Facebook or any social network for that matter, or really anywhere your actual you know, your birth date, your year, uh, uh, year of birth, uh, especially your social security numbers. Your well, I have my uh, I have my my you know the the day and month that's that fine. I was born. That's fine. But you know, I recently took off after talking with somebody. I, I took off the year uh, a year ago. Yeah, yeah. No, I've been I recommending everybody number. do that. Yeah. I have my uh, my cell phone phone. Well, number. yeah, and, and that, that doesn't that's bother the only me. Only way have, to get a hold of me. Well, at the time. true, and I and I use my phone numbers up there as well as and and uh, my birthday uh, month and day but not year I don't put up there I certainly would not put up social security numbers they certainly wouldn't put up uh, driver license numbers and oh, yeah, you know, when yeah, you start getting the social security numbers what really upsets me is technically uh, your social security number is not supposed to be used for any kind of ID at all and yet uh, almost everybody uses it so you know you're stuck with that situation you know you, they want it that's what you use so why well, it would be interesting getting back to this uh, you know thing we're talking about uh, where you know I, I'm assuming what it is you know a cop searches your home they see it you know they see a computer he touches it you know and then and then it goes to an open screen um, I'm, I'm assuming basically you know what what should be in my imagine my mind what it should be is basically you know that if they have a, a warrant I'm assuming do they have to be specific and they want if they're just searching searching for drugs and they and they search a computer they touch the mouse is that is that a, is that an unreasonable search yeah I don't know I well because you know my imagination my, my I would be thinking you know if they're looking for drugs they're not gonna they're not gonna touch a mouse I mean they're not gonna see some sort of digital drug well I think you're right because I think in uh, in the warrants they're pretty specific as to what you're looking for and yeah. you're right if they're coming into a home to search for drugs I don't think that covers your computer but I, I, well, I, mean, I, I well I think they could I mean they, they could say you know this guy for some reason keeps contacts of drug dealers or you know something well, there you like go that. but but still, if in I'm, the warrant it, it spells out specifically they're looking for proof that this person is selling drugs and is keeping a database yeah. or a list of, of people that they're you know that he's selling drugs to yes that should be in the warrant and I can certainly see that being part of it but I still think that's what you need I think the issue is uh, with law enforcement and and um, is that when you get a warrant you make sure it's it's for everything that you want to cover and and I think it should be private I I'm still not happy about the cell phone situation I, I'm just waiting for it to to move along to my iPad and to my Android and to my laptop and pretty soon anything that you keep a database on is is no longer privileged well I mean the, the the other the other thing I mean to do is you know there's encryption programs I know for a while the government was trying because they couldn't break the encryption they were trying to get all these encryption programs oh, to give you the back the, the, some sort I can't of remember key. the poor guy's name or rope PGP, right? Oh, yeah, uh, Zimmerman or something like that. I'm sorry, I, I, I can't remember your name now. But he, this poor guy, was run through the ringer. Uh, you know, the government wanted uh, a backdoor access key into everything, and um, I know he was let out. I think he was arrested and he was let out. So I'm going to assume that PGP probably does have a backdoor key somewhere. Yeah, well, I don't know. I, I doubt it. I mean, honestly, they probably didn't have a reason. Hold them. I mean, what was the saying? I mean, it, it's not like it was treason and been a program they didn't want government to have access I to. I believe that's what they were charging him with. Uh, I doubt that would have upheld in Congress. I mean, I mean, yeah, well, in the courts. In the courts, I don't know. I mean, I, come on, treason. You know, it's like what they did to Kevin Metnick. You know, he was sent in jail because they were afraid he could whistle some sort of missile launch can code. Whistle. I that that you know, that's for some reason they thought that he could whistle something that you know I don't know if that's a joke or not but they literally held him for I swear it was like a month or a couple of weeks that you know because they were afraid he could do something okay so they wouldn't let him near a computer a phone you know basically no contact so he had absolutely no internet access whatsoever well he was banned for a while I, um, there was an episode of the screensavers the first time he was actually allowed to like touch a computer and be on the internet hmm. you know was yeah. than that. I'll be darned. Well, anyway, more interesting stuff because I'm sure I'm sure this will come more and more as uh, as time goes on. We're going to find out what what are what truly are our privacy rights, what belongs to us, and what belongs to whatever social network or whatever location you put yourself in, LinkedIn or whatever it may be. I wonder how they work it. I have no desire to be LinkedIn, <laughs> so yeah. I've never been interested in it. I mean, it's more of a business, you know, networking for professionals, but. You know. Well, maybe we should look into it. We should probably be LinkedIn. That'll that'll be my project. I'll see if I'm getting uh, old guy tech LinkedIn. 
<laughs> Might as well get going. So what else we got going on? Uh, for some reason here, let's say uh, Microsoft is trying again to calm people into thinking that Internet Explorer is the safest safest browser around. Hmm. No, I, I don't. You, well, I use IE a little bit. I, I, the, I there's a feature IE I like, but it's not particularly a safety feature. You know, you can actually make uh, tagged specific specific. You know, you drag a the picture. The you know the the, I forget what it's called, the, the picture or whatnot from the URL bar, drag it to the desktop, uh, the type of the bar at the bottom, you can actually, you know, do a uh, a website specific program button, like a shortcut. You know, I use that for Netflix, Pandora, you mm -hmm. know. Well, my biggest argument about the only thing that I actually use IE for is um, Microsoft specific updates. Or, um, yeah, TechNet. Yeah, TechNet. Which we're members of, and you know, which you have to use, i.e., you don't have a choice. Which I'm kind of surprised that hasn't been challenged, uh, especially in Europe, which seems to like to go after Microsoft. Well, what are they, well, they going to do? I mean, it's, it's Microsoft programs. I mean, it's the uh, see, even that I think is a little far for Europe. I mean, it's not like consumer, you know, it's not like if, you know, if consumers use it. I mean, it's it's specifically for Microsoft products for business professionals or. Or people who want to learn the software more for amount. I, I don't even see how they it, have grounds to stand on. It, it's control again. Once again, Microsoft wants to control Microsoft stuff. Wants to control everything that you have on your desktop, and and I think that's that's part of it. You need to use it. So I don't necessarily have a problem with that. I find it I find it more annoying than anything. Yeah. Um. I, uh, I, I I thought that set was pretty cool. I mean, the, given on what it, the article talks about, there's a couple of caveats that you know Microsoft should have gotten a couple of points, uh, you know, deducted. But I thought that was kind of cool. I mean, I use Firefox and it gives me a two, and I think they said IE always is a you know a four, which I think it's a four out of four score. Could be according to Microsoft, Chrome and Linux only get a two point five for security. I want to give. Um, Props to uh, Stephen Von Nichols, who's written this particular article uh, that I think I, uh, I got off of ZDNet. Um, that he's talking about this, and uh, he goes on to say, Microsoft has always been fond of playing analysts to say that its products are best, or having partners release reports showing that their rivals' products are second rate, and now websites that show how Internet Explorer is better than Chrome and Firefox when it comes to security. Uh, didn't Microsoft just release a major uh, patch just recently? I think Tuesday. What's today? Thursday. But that's one Tuesday of the reasons. Micro the I, that's one of the reasons they they would tout is unlike any other company, Microsoft. You know, patches their product. Uh, <coughs> Adobe. Um, <laughs> that they constantly patch their product. Right. And that that's touted. You know, and I believe it's it's good. They they find a problem or somebody else thinks a problem within their software and they patch it. Yeah. You know, I think that's I I, I like that. Well, it's a good thing, obviously. I mean, we've got to do that. And then, and then, of course, that's the other thing that you talk to people, and they're scared to death of, of uh, running, you know, any kind of updates or anything. And, of course, I, I always recommend any of you out there uh, on your computers, uh, particularly Windows users, that uh, that you do all the updates and you do them on a regular basis. I, I don't know. I mean, I had a, a media center computer that I never ran the updates for, mainly because every time I update, I had to spend hours correcting what the update. Yeah, but meant. you were using media center for a very specific thing and basically watching television. You didn't use the computer. You didn't have any personal information on it. True. You, you know, you didn't have so. Yeah, in your situation, I can see that there was nothing there to be had, uh, unless they were going to exploit a whole in that uh, a media center to try to get into the rest of your network. Then it depends on how good your firewall is working and what else is going on. So uh, This guy goes on to say, I quote from the IE patch uh, update MS11-081, which applies to all currently supported versions of Microsoft Windows and Internet Explorer, IE6 as well. The most severe vulnerabilities could allow remote execution of a user's view and specifically crafted web pages using the Internet Explorer. An attacker who successfully exploits any of these vulnerabilities could gain the same user rights as a local user. Those whose accounts are configured to have fewer user rights in their system could be less impacted than those who operate administrative user rights. 
Yes, and that includes IE9, uh, according to this. The best and most up-to-date Internet Explorer yet. So even uh, IE9 has vulnerabilities running under Windows 7. So I thought that was pretty interesting, too. But I'll give, uh, I'll give Microsoft, again, uh, kudos for making certain that, uh, that everything gets patched as rapidly as they can. Although sometimes they find it funny. You know, it's my understanding that some vulnerabilities that have been out there have been out there for a long, long time. I've known it, and I haven't done anything. Or some are touted as features. Yeah, I don't know, but I mean, uh, wasn't it not too long ago uh, an exploit that they knew about that they hadn't patched for over six months, something like that? Well, there's and been what was it? Uh, there was something I, for the life of me, don't remember that they've been there since like Windows 3.1 that you know had been through. I think it was Windows 7 or Vista that they they patched within that time frame. Hmm. You know, it took them like you know 20 years to do it. Yeah, yeah. Well. <laughs> Six months, twenty years—that's a big difference. But uh, anyway, I—it uh, is—it is—it is, it is a good thing. My recommendation to all of you on your computers is do all the updates, uh, specifically uh, Windows updates as well as your uh, antivirus program, whatever you're using. Make sure that that's updated on a regular basis as well. Most of the antivirus uh, programs out there do it automatically, so um, they update their signature files fairly regularly. So I'm not too worried about that. Uh, I will say. Uh, I'm pleasantly surprised with Microsoft's antivirus program. Uh, I'm I, essentials. No, no, yeah, I'm sorry. It's, it's um, MSE, Microsoft Security Essentials. Sur Security I'm Essentials. I'm not yeah. so sure. I mean, it may work, but it doesn't. I don't know. It just feels like that it's not. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I've used other ones that you know tell you. It just does, gives you more information. This one just doesn't seem to. I think it just works. I, I mean, it's it's free. Everybody, there's no excuse for people not having. Uh, antivirus True. now. Uh, well, I mean, there's been, it, it's there's been rated uh, the the companies out there rating these antivirus programs rate rated higher than Norton 360. Well, I yeah. haven't used Norton. And well, but you know that's a big one out there because uh, it's pushed a lot. So it's it's I mean, rated I, higher than that. And it's ra rated as well as um, some of the others. Um, I, I mean, I liked I liked ESET, and I would could still use it if it wasn't giving me havoc with certain. With certain Windows things, I like you said too. Uh, not 32, um, but I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not sure that it works that much better than uh, Microsoft's antivirus virus. No, program, and no, it's free. You're right. So yeah, I mean the free is you know I like the free. I would. Yeah. And I don't like having to pay for constantly having to pay once or three years for you know ESET. Right. I like the functionality, but I haven't had any right. problems. Yeah, and so. uh, uh, no no offense to e, uh, ESET, but um, I didn't renew it. I went ahead and used Microsoft Security Essentials. <laughs> it was free. A whole lot better deal, and especially since we're working so hard like everybody is right now to try to uh, make a little bit of money. We're, we're trying to do the best we can and cook every corner, so that was a good corner in the cut, and I think they did a good job. So, so what's your favorite browser? Firefox. I still enjoy Firefox, and <clears throat> my internet experience through Firefox is, you know, a lot different. Um, I run no script, um, which basically doesn't allow any any scripts or anything to run without my permission. I use uh, what's it, HTTPS everywhere. That basically any sites that have HTTPS enabled, I use specifically. Um, wow, that's annoying. <laughs> I had to do a little something here. Um, something different. Uh, you know, I. There, you know, there are things I, I use like uh, oh, I forgot. There's the password manager I use. I you know I I I I just happen to like Firefox because of all the extensions. It does seem to slow down, and that that memory leak. I mean, Firefox seems to use an incredible amount of uh, amount of storage or uh, RAM. Yeah. I mean, it's it it's crazy, but I you know I, I can't beat the experience. Yeah. I, I absolutely love the extensions I use. Well, I. <laughs> However, if I could find if some of the extensions I do use on Chrome, but I use it, maybe I'm just I don't know. If I'm just not the biggest Google fan. Well, I'll, I, and I understand and that's that. That's probably but, one of the reasons but I. But you know, switched. Firefox has gotten become bloatware, and I, it, it's slow, it's clunky. Um, I don't think it's fresh and exciting as it was before. Um, I'm, I, I almost exclusively use Chrome now. Uh, I think Chrome is faster. Uh, it, it just worked for me. It just works a lot faster. It's quicker. It's not as clunky. Um, it doesn't have all the extensions that's, that Firefox has, but that's part of the problem. I think Firefox has too many extensions, and I think you know there, there's too many problems with everything that's out there. You can you can get crazy with all these extensions and and. <laughs> 
put everything everything in the kitchen sink in it. You know. Well, I mean, for me, all the extensions I use, I, I use, you know, would be wish something that I wish that would have been in there in the first place. I mean, they have added a couple of them that I do use, but I don't like their implementation of it. Um, I use something called X Marks that. Uh, that I, I I like their implementation of it a lot better than I like Firefox, so yeah. I still use it because I prefer it. Now X Marks works cross platform yeah. also, and and it syncs all your it, it syncs uh, right bookmarks, I, right? Yeah, I forgot which company buy it, but bought it because it used to do passwords, but now it's uh, just password. I mean, not passwords. It's it's just, just bookmarks. bookmarks. And I happen to like it. Like it when I use my MacBook Air when I'm out on the road or you know goofing around in a coffee shop. It's everything's there. I find a site, I mark it there. It goes on my desktop, my Windows machine. What's it called again? X Marks. Yeah, I think I'm going to start using it because I, I would like to have that ability to uh, cross platforms and, and across my different browsers to have the bookmarks there. Uh, so uh, let's chalk that one up as that one we should all try. I and maybe I, I I'll love come back X Marks. Yeah, I'll, uh, let's do a review of it in, in the next week or so. And uh, I'll I'll load it up and see how it works. Because I've been using it for years. Yeah, yeah. That's so that's great. So I'd like to do that. And and uh, you know I'm hoping that we're getting some people viewing these uh, these videos, and uh, we'll have some ideas for us. We'd we'd love some of you to Skype in and join us in these conversations. Uh, we want you all to be part of it. Um, we are by no means the experts. We don't tout ourselves of that. But um, this is just my opinion. Half of well, this, so. I, 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 again, it's just both of our ideas. And and I've been doing this long enough that uh, that's my business line too. So we're gonna let the phone ring <laughs> you can see it's a live show anyway uh, uh, I, we would like your input we'd like to have you come and, and uh, either Skype in or even come to our studio and help us talk about the the different things that we're going to talk about today's what well, was internet day and decided to talk about a number of things as far as internet goes uh, next week it could be something local uh, you know we're in the uh, Sacramento Placeville area if it has something to do with the local area that would be great we would uh, we'd, we'd love to have you join us on that uh, and we always want more people and also um, you know if you have a company or something you're starting uh, we would love to highlight your uh, your company or whatever you're starting up come on uh, come on over to the studio and join us and we'll discuss about what you're doing and get it out there but we need supporters and we need you to help us out as much as possible um, and you know eventually we're going to be going for sponsors so that we can help pay for all this beautiful studio that we built at least we think it's beautiful um, I'm going to have to get rid of the ringer on that phone there. So. <laughs> but we're learning. We're learning as we go along here. So anyway, I want to thank you very much for uh, watching uh, Old Guy Tech. My name's Rob Charney. Uh, I'm here with Jonathan Charney, and we will see you soon. Bye. Oh, yeah.